Two days ago, something happened, and I was really upset. And I felt like, yeah, I know I'm upset, but why am I upset? It was more like, you know, like, why? And I felt, well, I'm, I'm upset because. Because I was good to that person, and it's not coming back. It's coming back in hurting me. Once I knew that, you know what? I felt like we're going to have to have a session. Once I knew that, I didn't need to feel. The connection had been has been done so often, I'm good, but they're treating me badly, that once that was that insight was incorporated, that knowledge, that consciousness of what was happening to me was connected to the consciousness of that feeling what it is, I was fine. And that's the beauty about primal, by the way, is that yes, we have to feel what hurt, and we have to establish all those connections. But once you felt it for what it was and enough that there is no residual pain there, you don't necessarily have to feel it again. And it comes to that point where, well, that's what it was. And I knew it was in the past. I knew the present was not. So <coughs> it's just like, it's not just that I knew, it's just that was it. I didn't need to go and feel it. It was, I knew and it belonged in the past, but I had felt the past, so the present was really nothing. It was not. So that is consciousness. And the more you do all this, the more you know who you are, which is what I find so fantastic. You know who you are. And uh, I think I've told you one day, but one day I was, um, was at my mother's, and there were two houses. There was a little house in the garden and the main house, so I went always to feel in the little house. And I would come up, and she you see me you know, with my hair like this, the eyes like that, and all that. And she would say, you know, what, what happened? And I never really wanted to say anything that I knew, because she was really a, a fantastic person. She just had a lot of pain. And so I would say things like, you know, well, I just had to feel something that hurt me, but, you know, I'm fine now. And she would take me in, in her arms. And, and then sometimes she would say, but tell me a little. Tell me about it. How does it work? And I would tell her, and I never forgot the way she said, my God, it must be fantastic to know who you are. And I never forgot that, because when you are not conscious, when you are repressed here and here and there, the truth is you don't know who you are. All this stuff is buried somewhere in your unconscious, frozen conscious, which for episode was full of demons. It's not full of demons, it's full of our past. And it's full of our pain, and that's really what's there. So once you go back to the past, and you go to the pain, and you feel it for what it was, that is consciousness. You are conscious. You know who you are. And you also know that something that looks like it's so, so, it hurts you so much or whatever, once you have access to it because you've been there so many times, then, you know, that knowledge is enough. You don't need to go back sometimes. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But you are conscious. You can access what it was. You know, why was I hurt by someone I felt I had been good to, whom I felt was not treating me well? Because that is an old feeling. As a child, you are good, but you are not loved anyway. That goes very far, very, it's a very strong feeling, it goes very deep. But once you felt that for what it was so many times, that this person did not treat me as well as I did, so what? It didn't matter anymore. Any questions? No, I was just gonna say, I think what, when you do that, whatever that feeling on the first line is, goes away. I mean, it's been my experience. The few right. times that that's happened, that, you mm -hmm. know. It can go away. Like if I feel crushed up here by somebody in here, and I mean, right. I had that happen recently. That's a good just, example. <laughs> went away. Because the you have felt that, that. Sensation went Right, away. you have felt it and you have connected it. Yeah. So now when, instead of having this, you can always say some reasons that, but mm -hmm. they're still blocked, therefore you're stuck with a symptom or the anxiety, or the racing mind, or whatever that is represented partially, because it's only partial, otherwise you would feel it for what it is. Once that has been done, you know, oh, that's what it is. But it's, it's, it's enough, you can just go on with your life. Which is what's great, because otherwise that means we would always have to go back to it, but we don't. There's a certain valence to each pain, and once you felt enough of it, you can live your life, and it doesn't have to affect you so much. So why is it I think I just explained, right? Where is it I just explained also? Where is it? It's on all your levels of your brain and your body, and once you have reconnected it, 
it's not there anymore because the amount of pain that you have to block, you don't need to block anymore, it's out and it's felt and therefore you have access, you are conscious again. When did it begin? No, that's a good question. When did it begin? You answered that too. You answered that? You answered that. I answered that. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> when did it begin? It began at the time where your need was deprived. It begins at the time when the pain came in. You're coming, you are in, in your crib, you should have someone next to you that makes you feel safe. There is nobody next to you to make you feel safe and it's dark and you're alone and you don't understand. You can't process and say, okay, I'm four months old, I'm in my crib, I hear noises there, but maybe it's not so bad, maybe I shouldn't be scared. You just get out of your mind because there's nobody there to make you safe. So that's why it begins on that level. When you come home and there's nobody to make you feel good or be interested in your day and in your, and in your life and what's happening to you, there is pain because your need is to have them interested in you. You are the beginning of your life. You need their input. You need their, the way they look at you with love. They need, you need to have them interested to listen to you, to ask questions, to be sympathetic if you have a problem in school, to help you. If you don't have that, you hurt on that level. And then, of course, in the present, it's the same. If someone does do something that hurts you, well, they're going to hurt in that on that level. And by the way, sometimes you are hurt only in the present. That can happen. But usually, there is all this in the back, which is why it makes it so unbearable. I am convinced that even if you love someone and then they stop loving you, it's going to be traumatic, it's going to hurt, it's going to be terrible. But if you have this connection and if you have enough of yourself, it won't be nearly as bad as if you don't. Because if you don't, then all this is going to come up on top of the real loss in the present. When you lose someone who love dies, it's going to be very, very traumatic and very painful. But it's going to be a lot worse if you also have to feel that maybe your parents died when you were very young, or maybe they were not there for you, or maybe as a child, or as a baby you were alone, because all that is going to be dredged up and it's going to add to the pain of the loss that you have. Okay, front. Yeah, I have to tell him that I think it begins before. I think it begins before you even. All right, there. I wasn't sure I was going to go there. <laughs> but, yes. uh, I'm going to take you there. <laughs> of course, you will. <laughs> have you read the epigenetic uh, chapter from Art? Okay, well, I'm going to touch on it briefly. Actually, I've been bugging Art to change the introduction of his book, which is Life Before Birth, which is a great book, by the way. And uh, because I've been telling him, you know, it's great, it's all the, all the stuff around birth and before birth and how it affects our life forever, and there's more and more studies coming out all the time. And so if you're interested, I could ask him to have a copy of it here so that you guys can look at it. And I've been telling him, you know what, this book is for women who are expecting children. Yeah. This yeah. is who should know that stuff. This is who should be completely aware or conscious, mm -hmm. aware of the importance of what they're doing. While they are manufacturing that human being and how those nine months are going to determine that child's life forever. And I know that's a freaky thought, and I think I touched on it one night. It's an ongoing discussion Art and I have. I keep saying, we are predetermined. And he says, are you sure? <laughs> so we keep going back and forth. But the truth is, in my opinion, yes, we are. In the sense that everything that happened to us since conception is affecting us. Biologically, physiologically, and later on emotionally and, and psychologically. There is no question. If a mother is smoking really bad, taking drugs really bad, stressed out, having a very unhappy life at home, being unhappy, not wanting the child, feeling that the child is a burden, is going to make her life more complicated. All this stuff that creates stress. You know, the cortisol, the, the hormone, stress hormone is going to be kicking in, and it's not going to let that fetus develop in a completely harmonious way. 